Hi everyone, the Arty Dans here from the Arty Dans YouTube channel, and welcome to my week in horror, episode twenty. Um, so the reason this episode came about is because I recently filmed the Death Forest episode that I wanted to do with Wilco C. Rollins, and I realised that I made a mistake, and I kept calling that episode twenty one instead of twenty, and I realised now I've got a gap in the episodes, um, and rather than you know recut them all. I thought, well, I'll just make a temporary episode 20. So this is it. This is my week in horror, episode 20. And it's a bit of a personal video. It is my history of horror and how I kind of got into the genre and why I like it. So I want to take you back to my first memory of horror. So I'm currently in my 40s. It gives you a bit of an idea of how old I am. And my first memory of horror was my sister renting... A nightmare on Elm Street. She had some friends over for the evening and they went to the milk bar and rented a videotape. And that video was A Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, my parents looked at the tape and they said, all right, well, we'll all watch it together. We'll see how silly this is. And so I think I was probably around seven or eight at the time. And, you know, I'm watching this thing. I'm watching Freddy Krueger coming out of I don't even remember where he was coming out of. The memory of the movie is vague. And of course, I've seen it since then. But I don't remember too much about what the movie was about at the time. But I remember it was a Saturday night. And I'm petrified watching this thing that Freddy's going to come and get me. And my mum asks me, you know, go take a shower, Dan. And I think I had a shower. Oh, 10 seconds. Boom, in and out. I was so scared. Freddy was going to come out of the cupboard and get me. I really was. And my mum's like, well, what are you doing back here? You know where you had a shower in that time. I think, well, I'm pretty sure I think I had a shower maybe five, six, seven times that night. All couldn't have been longer than a couple of seconds because I was so, I was realistically petrified that Freddy was going to come and get me. And that's the power of horror movies, I think, that you can have, that it can have this effect on you, even as a kid, especially as a kid. And that's how you get your love for something when you're a kid. That's why I haven't gotten out of collecting Hot Wheels or playing video games, because, you know, it's things that I'm a kid, I still love doing as an adult. And horror movies was one of them. So I think my next gap was quite long between horror films. So... Now we're pushing to teenager years. I'm in high school. And I'm looking through the TV guide. Because uh, at this time, you know, Mortal Kombat was out. So I was getting into martial arts movies. And then slowly transformed into getting into action movies. Stuff like Die Hard. I fell in love with Die Hard the first time I watched it. It was so damn good. And to this day, it's my favorite film of all time. But I wanted to get into horror again. And my mum was big into horror. She loved it. But we're talking about the 60s, 70s type horror, the ghost of Mrs. Muir and stuff like that. She wasn't into stuff like The Exorcist. Certainly not Halloween or anything, anything like that, right? So I see in the TV guy, Channel 9 has Friday the 13th part four on. And I decided I'm going to set my VCR up to record it. So Channel 9 was showing... Friday the 13th, part two to eight. At the time, they had a deal with Paramount. And uh, that was the back catalogue of movies that they had from Paramount. Or was it from Warner Brothers? I can't remember. Whoever whoever took care of the movie, I'm pretty sure it was Paramount. So it meant they didn't, have the, they didn't have the license for Friday the 13th, part one. So I could never watch that. Um, and I missed parts two and three. Uh, they were on the two days beforehand. So I thought, I'm not going to miss the opportunity to watch part four. So over the next five nights, I recorded parts four, five, six, seven, and eight. And again, fell in love, fell in love with such a stupid film. I mean, the, the good thing about Australian television back in the mid nineties was that um, they were still editing films, but late at night, uh, they, they kind of got away with a little bit more than normal. So, all the swearing was taken out. And I remember the first time I rewatched Friday the 13th Part 4 on video. 
and hearing the C word getting dropped in that movie thing. I don't remember that. You know, there was none of that on television. Um, but the violence was still there. All the kills were still there. All the sex was still there. They didn't tone down any of the boobs, any of the nudity, or any of the of the violence. It was just the coarse language that was taken out. Uh, and of course, you know, two three two three years later on Channel Nine, you could say any word under the sun. So it goes to show how quick television changed in Australia during the nineties. So then I'm watching these Friday the Thirteenth movies, and I'm really getting into it. And Jason's awesome. I really loved it, and I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, but I actually really enjoy Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight. Jason takes Manhattan. I think it is. I think it is a lot of fun. I really do. And my mum was a watcher of Young and the Restless at the time, and one of the cast members of Young and the Restless was in Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight. So you know, it kind of. You know, I would come home from school and catch the tail end of Young and the Restless because Mum was watching it and I recognised the actor. So that was kind of a bit of a link there. But this was it. This is it. This is how I got into a bit more seriously as a teenager getting into the, the movies. And that was, I credit Friday the 13th for that. My uncle had a pretty good movie collection at the time. And he had The Evil Dead and he'd been telling me for ages to watch it. You want to watch horror? You've got to watch The Evil Dead, he said to me. So I was brave enough. I believe I was 14 or 15. Brave enough to, to borrow the tape of him. And I think it was either a Saturday or a Sunday morning before I got up and had breakfast. I thought, I'm going to watch this. And I was worried that I was going to get scared and then not be able to sleep that night. So I thought, well, I've got the whole day to get over watching this film. And I watched The Evil Dead, the first one. And that is a lot of fun. I can forgive 80s filmmaking. It's so much fun. And watching The Evil Dead Part 1, yeah, that was it. That, that was it. My love of horror it was definitely solidified by then. Finding horror movies after that was a little tricky. Having to rely on things on television, borrowing stuff from my uncle. Um, I know during that time, I probably watched Poltergeist, Critters, Gremlins. So these are very big 80s franchises for horror films. Then I got a job when I was 16 that uh, res resulted in me having to start really early Saturday morning. So I would spend the night uh, at my grandmother's. And I would go to the video store on the Friday night and rent out some tapes. So I had them for the whole week because I knew I'd be back the next week to return the tapes. And the lady at the store was a video busters. If you live in Australia, video busters. So a lovely lady who worked there. I was 16 at the time and she could see that I was getting into horror. So that she was starting to recommend me some movies. Now I remember my first revelation of renting tapes was that there was a Friday the 13th part nine. Jason Goes to Hell. I did not know this film existed because it hadn't been on television and didn't go on television for a very long time. Sometime in the mid-2000s, the movie finally made it to television. So I watched Friday, the Jason Goes to Hell, and I loved it. I mean, I know people don't like it, and I know people don't kind of get it, but I've, I've really loved it. And then... The lady said to me, well, if you like the Friday the 13th movies, you probably should check out Halloween. And I did. And Halloween to this day, the first one, I don't care what anyone says about it. Um, I adore the first Halloween. It is a utterly outstanding film from John Carpenter. And yeah, it takes a while for something to happen, but the dread's always there. Loomis rocks. And of course, around this time was the resurgence in 90s horror. So Scream came out. Scream was terrific. I don't care what anyone says about Scream. There's, there's actually no way anyone from the 90s could say Scream was a bad film because it, it was terrific. Scream kick-started something. Uh, Kevin Williamson then kicking into movies like, what did he do next? I know what you did last summer. The Faculty. Those kind of films, 13 Floor, 13 Ghosts, sorry. We're starting to get some really good films, really great horror films. Faculty, I think I remember, was being great. And of course, at this time, there were still Halloween sequels being pumped out. Uh, 
I'd made sure that I'd watched all of the Friday the 13th. So I was introduced to part one, which, you know, I didn't know the history of part one. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, where's Jason? Why is, why is this all to do with Mother Voorhees? Or what's her name? Pamela. Pamela Voorhees. And that was something, you know what, I quite like that. And then, like, like seeing Kim Bacon getting killed in the throat uh, with a harpoon under the bed. <laughs> that was great. And of course, it left itself open for a sequel. The boy says, uh, what is his name? Adrian someone. Uh, you know, leaving it into part two. Now, those movies were terribly acted, but they were fun. And of course, part three is when Jason gets his mask. It's also that stupid 3D film where they shoehorn all this really crappy 3D in. Of course, I watched all the Halloweens as well. And Halloween 6 was new. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Again, another film I really enjoy. And I've seen the producer's cut as well. And I actually really enjoy that too. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a fence sitter when it comes to Halloween movies. I really like them all. And especially the 4 and 5, the Daniel Harris movies. I love them. Um, I've, never seen Friday the Th- I've never seen Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, because it had nothing to do with Michael. So to this day, still haven't seen it. Now, I'm trying to think. Oh, also at the same time, I got into the Amityville movies and try to watch as many of those as possible. Stuff like Leprechaun movies and uh, The Return of the Living Dead 3 with Mindy Clark. That was great as well. So there was, you know, 90s, late 90s, saw this great resurgence in, in campy horror films that were a lot of fun. And then, of course, who can forget all the stuff from Troma? I mean, Troma maybe more was towards the comedy horror or the splatter. Uh, horror side of it, but there was, you know, introduced to this world of trauma, um, blew my mind as well. But then I'm trying to think of the first horror film I ever saw in the cinema, and I'm pretty sure it was Halloween H2O. So gathering that's the 20th anniversary of Halloween, Halloween, that would put that at 1998 here in Australia. And I can't remember when exactly it came out. And it might have actually come out in 1999 because, you know, we would, back then, we weren't getting movies the same day and day as the US cinemas. We had those long delays before movies would come to the cinema. It's it's funny. I'll tell you a side story. Uh, I remember going to Bali for schoolies week and picking up a copy of Rush Hour on VCD and then watching it. And it, the movie was still six months away from coming out in the cinema in Australia. And then going to Hoyt's later that day, Hoyt's being the cinema chain, and talking to the people there. And they're like, oh, yeah, we've all seen Rush Hour as well. And it's no point releasing it now. We've all seen it. So that was quite funny. And this is, gives you an idea of how long it took movies to come to cinemas in Australia. And then, of course, from cinema, you had to wait, I believe it was nine months until it hit video. And then from video, it was two years to television. And then, you know, pay TV came in and stuffed everything up with that. And now, you know, movies go pretty quickly to video straight away. And then, you know, within a couple months, they're on television. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Halloween H2O, first movie I saw, first horror movie, I can safely say that I saw in the cinema. Wasn't a great fan. I, I liked that. Jamie Lee Curtis came back. Of course, Josh Harnett was in it, who was also in, I'm pretty sure he was also in The Faculty. So, you know, he was developing himself as a bit of a horror kind of uh, actor at the time, but didn't have that kind of oomph. Uh, I'm pretty sure I also saw I Know What You Did Last Summer in the cinema, because that's around that time, you know, when you're a, a late teen, 17, 18, 19, and you kind of want to go to the cinema all the time and watch movies. That's all stuff like Mortal Kombat, Godzilla, all in the cinema. So I'm pretty sure. I would have seen I Know What You Did Last Summer in the cinema. Now, you're probably thinking, on this channel, I, I usually cover Asian horror movies. I don't talk about Western horror movies at all. And that's because there's so many channels on YouTube that talk about Western horror movies. I thought, well, if I do that, no one's ever going to watch me. And, you know, quite frankly, and not too many people watch now because it's Asian horror. So there's not really that big a pull for that. But still, you know, I enjoy talking about Asian horror. But if I was to say what was the first Asian horror to film, I watched, I couldn't, I can't quite put my finger down on what it was. I think, like everyone else, it was probably The Ring. 
and I remember finding that utterly fantastic. Um, and then around that time, uh, there was a, oh no, it's not probably not around that time. So it would have been The Ring. And then I got into buying DVDs. And I, I was a bit naughty. I used to actually import them from Malaysia. But they were, uh, unfortunately, they were copied discs. So they weren't exactly original. But I was starting to import movies from Malaysia. And, you know, like, oh, Asian horror. And one of the discs I imported was The Grudge, Juon. And I remember wanting to watch it. And stupidly, I picked one o'clock at night to want to watch it. And I, I got my sister with me and we were watching it together. And again, I was petrified. I, you know, I'm 20, oh God, 21, 22 years old, watching a horror film and actually being petrified because of that, that gargling sound that uh, Kayako made. That was just, you know, that actually did kind of freak me out. So that, there you go. Then my start of Asian horror was definitely The Ring. Uh, the Grudge, probably Dark Water, and then uh, The Eye, I believe, was The Eye, the Pang Brothers film. Then there was a pay TV channel had started in Australia called World Movies. I remember watching Inner Senses of that and Dumplings of that as well. So two really good Hong Kong horror movies watched on that channel. Of course, this was also around the same time that Jason X came out. So Jason Goes to Space. Um, Uber Jason, it was so many different titles for that. Um, I, again, I like, kind of liked it. I thought it was quite funny that they just, it was a bit of a piss take of the series. It was not supposed to be taken seriously. Then, of course, there was the big crossover, Freddy versus Jason, that I actually really liked. And, you know, that was directed by Ronnie Yu, who was uh, directing Asian horror movies at the time, or Asian action movies, I think, at the time. So he came in to do this. And that was terrific. I really liked it because I knew from the start no one was going to win. I think we all knew no one was going to win. They couldn't kill off one or the other. And it was awesome that New Line Cinema had brought them both together. But, you know, we, we knew there wasn't going to be much between them and... I was happy in the end. So from then on, um, it turned into a lot of splatter films, J Japanese horror, Korean horror. Uh, I remember getting into things like Attack Girl, Swim Girl, Attack Girl, Swim Team versus The Undead, which is also called The Undead Pool. Uh, then there, I saw that there was a movie version of um, Siren, the video game Siren. So watch that. I got Spiral, Uzumaki. I've seen that. I thought that was really cool, but I don't really remember it. Then, I think then the break of horror, like I would just pick up any horror that I would watch, mostly just American stuff, very rarely some uh, Asian stuff. Until then, I started kind of the YouTube channel four years ago, five years ago, and then started thinking, well, maybe I should focus a little bit more on Asian horror. So I started to really pick up the back catalogue a bit. Um, I don't actually own too many Asian horror movies on Blu-ray or DVD because I find them, a couple of reasons, I find them hard to get, but also I find that they're not the kind of movies that you re-watch. Again, you watch them once and that's it. So I do own a couple, like Detention, um, the Taiwanese film. I think it's fantastic. In fact, I still think I've got it in the plastic. I think I, I downloaded it and watched a downloaded copy um, and decided I'll just keep my original in the plastic. Um, I've got a couple of others that I bought really cheap in Hong Kong, like Larder Land and this uh, Flight Flight 3D movie that I think they were both Thai films. Uh, another one, uh, The Unborn Child. I think that's a pirate disc. So I've got a few uh, original Asian and, and pirated Asian horror movies, but not too many. And then, of course, there was a bit of the cinema revolution again. I was in Hong Kong uh, one day. And I was walking past a cinema in Mong Kok, and there was a poster saying Halloween was coming out. I've got the poster right there uh, that I framed it. You could see it in the, in the side of the frame. I didn't even know this movie was coming out. I think this was the part of this is the rebooted Halloween trilogy. And I remember going into the cinema in Hong Kong to watch Halloween and loving it i had i never forget i had a, a girl sitting next to me and i don't know why the hell of the whole cinema she had to sit next to me i'm constantly screaming throughout the whole film 
And of course, I wasn't screaming. I was really enjoying the film. I thought it was really good. Um, but, you know, by that stage, I'm out of the screaming phase. But that was, that was a great experience to watch Halloween overseas in a different audience. And I actually love the name that Halloween has in Hong Kong. Yu Gong Gong Sing Fong Fong, which means something to do with the moonlight. It's it's quite a cool name, and it, it, I'm very happy that it got released. Actually, going back a few years before that, uh, I remember my first Asian horror movie, and it's the only Asian horror movie I've ever seen in a cinema, and it's debatable whether it could be called a horror film, it was in China. In 2014, uh, Teru Ishii went to China, so Teru Ishii is a, a master of J-horror films, or the the godfather of J-horror, I think they call him, um, with the, a movie that he made. I can't remember the title of it, but Zhang Rei something, I think it's called. Um, he made this film called Bloody Doll. And I remember seeing the poster around, and I wanted to watch it, but was I was kept being, being told, it's going to be crap. It's a Chinese horror movie. It's going to be crap. You're not going to like it. I still wanted to see it. I went into the cinema and there was no English subtitles. So I had to kind of follow along with the story. Now, lucky for me, the story was dead easy to follow. It was it there wasn't much that needed clarification. And I remember laughing so hard at the film because of how it ended. And that was my first exposure to Chinese horror, realizing that it it was terrible. It, was a, it would be a few years later before I would watch another Chinese horror movie. And I remember it was Haunted Graduate, uh, Haunted Dormitory Marionette Teacher. It was a rainy Sunday afternoon. There was nothing else to do. So I found this movie and I watched it. And it, it was terrible. It was really terrible. But there was, it was like a car crash. You couldn't walk away from it. And I covered that recently in the Film Moon episode. And then, of course, just prior to watching that, I'd found one cut of the dead. And I, oh, actually, I do own one cut of the dead on Blu-ray as well. So I actually have a couple of good newish horror movies on Blu-ray. And again, it's debatable. Do you call one cut of, a, one cut of the dead a horror or a comedy? Uh, I'd still call it a horror film. Uh, but that also came out. And I remember watching it, not knowing anything about it, just saw it there and thought, well, okay, Japan, Japanese horror, we'll put it on. I remember watching it thinking, what the fuck is this film about? And then it, it dawned on me about 15, 20 minutes in that they hadn't cut the shot at all. That it was legitimately one take. And then the whole brilliance of the movie kicked in. It had gone from me looking at this pack of idiots making this stupid film to all of a sudden understanding that I was watching something utterly brilliant. I was watching actors do a whole film in one take. Admittedly, it gets to like the 35 minute mark and the title comes up on the screen and then it turns into a proper film, a proper narrative where you know we get scenes and it's edited properly. Uh, and you understand that that was you know his live broadcast that he was doing of a horror story. But One Card of the Dead probably reignited my love of wanting to watch Asian horror. Previously, Train to Busan tried to do that, and I think everyone can admit Train to Busan is a terrific film. But it's zombies. And yes, actually, so One Cut of the Dead is also zombies. But I think One Cut of the Dead is just a little bit more creative than Train to Busan. But I think Train to Busan will also always hold a special place in everyone's heart. Now, of course, since then, Korea's gone on to make far too many zombie movies, and most of them have just been shit out since then. Uh, I don't really like Korea's zombie output. And in fact, I'm not a big fan of Korea's horror output at all. Just for some reason, they've lost their touch. Um, I remember uh, 10 years ago, I was buying DVDs in a little mall in the Asian district of, of, of here where I live. And I came across a copy of Don't Click. And I thought, well, I'll buy this. So this is a Korean horror film. And it was badly translated. The, 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 the subtitles on the film were machine generated and it was a, it was an actual legitimate chore to get through the film but it was kind of enjoyable and that introduced me to, to Bo Young Park who I think is is cute the cutest Korean actress ever <sighs> so where do we go from there um from there 
I remember then watching a lot of Asian horror to try and build up the Artie Dance channel. And since then, I don't think I've seen a single horror film in the cinema. And I'm thinking that doesn't sound right. Because there would have been something that I've seen recently. But everything I've watched has been lately on streaming. So, you know, all, oh, well, I, I did see the Saw movie. But um, actually, <laughs> I've actually skipped a huge part of the story. I saw Saw, the first one, in the cinema. Actually, I saw it on a pirate disc, firstly. And then a couple of weeks later, it came in the cinema. And I asked my friend, do you want to go see this film? So I went to see it on a late Saturday night and I knew what was going to happen. And I just wanted to watch his reaction when the ending kicked in and he could understand what was going on. So I thought it was brilliant. And in fact, even going back further than that, I remember another film I saw in the cinema. It was a Blair Witch Project. Again, remember getting a pirated copy of that on a VCD disc. And the first disc didn't work, so I could only watch the second part of the Blair Witch Project. Now, admittedly, the second part is the interesting part. The first parts were really crappy and boring. But that was another movie. That was the first horror movie I bought on a legitimate DVD. Um, and I'm pretty sure I just went to see it in the cinema as well. So... That, that's a bit of backstory, but all the horror movies I've seen in the cinema is actually not a lot. And I don't think there ever will be because the other day I tried to, while well, I went to watch The Meg 2 in the cinema and just reminded about how horrible going to the cinema is when you've got all these idiots around you. That's it. That's that's my story of 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 my horror journey. And it's going to continue. It's definitely going to continue because it's still one of my favorite genres. Well, it is my favorite genre. But lately now, I've been getting into Indonesian horror. And Indonesian horror is something different. And it's really, it really is an avenue that, a, a horror country that you really need to watch. Really do. Uh, there is some great stuff coming out of Indonesia. Some great directors and some great work. And it's funny growing up Catholic and, you know, you used to all the Catholic horror movies like The Exorcist and and you know, Annabelle and The Conjuring, where it's all very heavily Catholic influenced. And then you watch Indonesian horror and it's all about the Muslim faith. And it's, it's a different perspective on horror. And it's fantastic. And I love watching them. And then, of course, um, everything else that's come out before then or after then and will come out, it's just very enjoyable. Um, I've been the Artie Dance. And this has been a special episode of My Week in Horror, episode 20, to make up for the Death Forest episodes that are coming in the next three with my special guest, Wilco C. Rollins. What are your experiences with horror? What was the first horror movie you saw that you can remember? What's the first movie horror movie that you saw in the cinema? What's the first horror movie that you bought on DVD? VHS. I, I actually have Jason Goes to Hell on VHS. Um, or, or Blu-ray. Um, let me know in the comments below. Press like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for listening to my rambling for the last 28 odd minutes. Um, and I've been the Hardy Dance, and I'll catch you next time for the Death Forest episodes of My Week in Horror.